Hey, what's up guys? I am Jake from todaysiphone.com. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, if you celebrate it. And here's what's going on this week on Today's iPhone. Okay, so the first thing I want to let you guys know is an interesting report came out recently, and it states that uh, developers for iOS make a lot more money than developers for Android, and basically the, the App Store for iOS in general has pulled in way more revenue and has therefore paid out a lot more money to developers than the Android app market. Since the iOS App Store opened in the summer of 2008, it's brought in about $4.9 billion worth of revenue, and of that, it's paid $3.5 billion to directly to the developers. Now, the Android app market, on the other hand, has brought in around $341 million worth of revenue since it started in February of 2009, and it's paid $239 million of that money to developers. Now, don't get me wrong, those are both huge chunks of money, but comparatively, the Android app market is pretty small time. Um, I'm gonna get some comments for that one. Do you think there's a reason why iOS users would um, pay more for applications than Android users? And, you know, do you think that could just be because of the customer base, or do you think that there's, like, an inherent difference between the iOS applications and the Android applications that make people more willing to pay for the iOS ones? Alright, next, really quickly, there's been a bunch of rumors for the past couple weeks about screens, more specifically the screen of the next iPhone and of the next iPad. Uh, there are rumors that Hitachi and Sony are employed by Apple to make a 4-inch mystery screen for an iOS device, which I'm assuming would be for the iPhone 5 or 6 or whatever they call it. And similarly, there are rumors that the iPad 3 will indeed be equipped with a retina display. Apparently, Apple has invested some money into Sharp uh, with the hopes that Sharp can produce quality, higher resolution iPad 3 screens. And this was confirmed by some guy at CNET, which doesn't really mean it's confirmed. It's just like an analyst thinks that it's going to happen. But as always, you know, these rumors have been around forever, the bigger screen and the retina display on the iPad 3. There's really no way of knowing for sure unless we see a leaked device that's verified or Apple makes an announcement. So you're just going to have to hold tight for some sort of official announcement. Until then, let the rumors flow. Alright, next. Microsoft Chief Research and Strategy Officer Craig Mundy uh, released a statement or, or said in an interview that Siri was basically old news that technology for Siri has existed in Windows Phone 7 for a year now and the only reason it's so hyped up is because Apple has to market it in that way because they didn't really add anything else of note to the iPhone 4S and I mean I wrote an article about this and the reaction seems to be pretty mixed uh, personally I completely disagree with this now now let me just get this out there right away I think Siri is cool but I don't think it's you know great I don't think it's very practical to to speak a, a Google search to your phone as opposed to just typing it. But that's just me. I think it's sort of like a FaceTime thing where it's cool, you want to use it when you first get the phone, but then it sort of just fades into the background. I could be totally wrong because I've never actually used a phone in Siri for more than a couple minutes, but that's just my impression of it. But at the same time, I really, really disagree with this statement because, first of all, if Microsoft had Siri-like technology and I'm not talking about like voice recognition and dictation because phones have had that forever. I, I had a flip phone six years ago that could, you know, I could speak my text messages to and it would know it. The difference between Siri and technology like that is the voice recognition is way, way better than a lot of the earlier devices. I personally can't speak to how the voice recognition works on Windows Phone 7. It's called Tell Me. I know, you know, that could be great, but it is great on the iPhone with Siri. And second of all, it's not really the fact that Siri can dictate your messages and stuff that makes it so great. It's the fact that it isn't just a dictation service. It has artificial intelligence. And because Siri has this artificial intelligence built in, you can say these commands in, you know, a bunch of ways. You know, Siri knows if you say, I'm locked out. It knows to call a locksmith. Tell me, you say, call this person, open this application, and it does it. It has a set list of commands that you give it. Siri, on the other hand, learns. It learns your wife, it learns your friends, it learns your favorite websites and all that stuff. So it's not new per se, but it, it takes the technology that was there with voice recognition and it takes it to a, another level. Well, at least that's what I think. I'm sure there will be those of you out there who vehemently disagree with me, and hopefully there are some of you out there who also, you know, agree with me and see things with my point of view. Um, I'd love to know your opinions either way, so let me know in the comment section below, or you can let me know on Twitter. Okay, really quick, uh, when I was editing this video, I came across a comparison video between Siri and Tell Me, and I'll put a link in the description, but, you know, this basically says it all. 
Create a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Okay, here's your meeting. Note that you already have a meeting about Thai course at 8.45 a.m. Send a text to Simone. Okay, I can send a text to Simone Arnold for you. What would you like it to say? What time is it in Perth? In Perth. It's 5 p.m. What time is it in Perth? Okay. Alright, next we have a very, very in-depth comparison between the iPhone 4S and the Android-equipped Galaxy Nexus. Cam spent some time with the device, he used it as his personal daily device for about a week or so, so we got a good impression of, you know, the differences and the similarities and what he likes better and what he doesn't. Uh, so we have a hardware comparison, we have a software comparison, we have a speed test, we have a camera comparison. So definitely check those out if you guys are, you know, on the fence on which phone you want to go with, which operating system, or if you're just interested, it's, it's a good read. There are four separate articles. The links to all of them are, of course, in the description down below. So check it out. All right, next, there's been some pretty cool developments with uh, home screen toggles for iOS that you don't need to jailbreak to get. This company called iPhone is a, uh, found a way to exploit a, I guess, I guess it would be a hole in Safari that allows you to create a bookmark of a Safari website and when you click the bookmark it doesn't bring you to Safari, it actually brings you to the settings of any particular thing. So you can have a Wi-Fi bookmark, you can have a Bluetooth bookmark, an airplane mode bookmark, and these are icons on your home screen and when you click them it brings you right to that section of the settings application so you don't have to go to the settings app then navigate to where you want to go to change the settings. Uh, it's, it's a pretty cool and it's really, really great that it doesn't require a jailbreak because, you know, toggles are something that iOS customers generally want and Apple seems pretty unwilling to provide them. So if you don't want to jailbreak, this is a great alternative. You can check out the article as well as Daniel has a quick how-to on how to actually do this. It's super easy. So if this sounds interesting to you, definitely check it out. All right, and one last thing. Uh, if you guys were just interested in getting to know the Today's iPhone crew a little bit more, you know, their background, how we got started with the site, all that fun stuff, um, we are starting to do, each member of Today's iPhone will be writing a, you know, about me, meet this person article over the next few weeks. Uh, Cam posted his a couple weeks ago, I posted mine this week. So, if you're not sick of us already and you want to learn a little bit more about us, Definitely check those out and uh, keep a lookout for the other TIP members who should be posting their articles shortly. Okay, well that is all the big news for this week guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Definitely keep in mind that the links to all of these stories I talked about in this video are in the description down below. So go check those out and oh my god, there's a turkey. That's a turkey. Look at how festive I am. If you wanted to talk to me a little bit more, talk about anything I talked about in this video, or just, you know, let me know how your day has been doing, uh, definitely feel free to follow me on Twitter at TIP underscore Jake. I try to respond to everybody that tweets me, so if you have something to say, the best place to do it is there. And as always, for more news, views, and reviews, please head over to todaysiphone.com. As always, for more news, views, and reviews, definitely head over to... Oh my god, that's not going into the video. It's just interesting to, uh, to check out these numbers and these statistics. That's not a good... I don't, I don't like how I said that. I'm not British. I do a very, very poor British accent. I apologize. I, I, I really do apologize for this. Wingardium Leviosa.